In this module, you are going to be coming up with your own educational technology. Now, while that may seem rather daunting, there are a wealth of opportunities and gaps in the education field where technology can address various issues and that you can propose an educational technology that can assist in the educational process. Now you will be able to choose what level, um, be it at a national level, at a um, system-wide level, at a um, statewide departmental level, at an individual school level, or in an individual classroom, or for an individual teacher, or even for an individual student. And then you will need to frame what the actual technology is going to address. And that's what we're looking at here. One of the various issues and opportunities where you can utilize an educational technology to address a problem or an opportunity that may exist. So there are a few basic categories of these opportunities. First is around mastery of skills, the fundamental aspect of education, students learning and being able to demonstrate their learning about something. And there are a range of existing educational technologies and um, classes of technology that you could explore around this particular issue. So for example, personalized learning, um, active engagement, engaging students with the learning process, collaborative learning, real-time feedback, and access to resources. So these are various aspects of mastery learning that you could explore how existing and emerging educational technologies could be applied to addressing these issues. Then there's developing skills that promote lifelong learning. So taking learning beyond individual courses and extending throughout someone's life. So again, um, their understanding of technology is an important aspect of that, as that tends to drive a lot of these opportunities. Um, critical thinking skills is an important element of lifelong learning. Uh, digital citizenship and being able to engage with the digital ecosystem um, Self-directed learning and being able to learn without supervised um, teacher support. And collaboration, being able to learn in teams and working together in their learning processes. All of these can be facilitated through technology. Then there's engaging with families, particularly with younger children and their learning journeys, being able to interact with their families, with their teachers, with themselves and with technology can be used to enhance the learning experiences. So for example, parent-teacher co collaboration and communication, um, open um, learning resources so that parents have got access to high quality learning material that they can utilize with their children. Um, family engagement and allowing parents and children, particularly as they enter the teenage years, to engage with one another and engage with their learning journeys together. Then there's digital communication tools, which just allows us to do a whole range of back-end processes that support family engagement. And parent training programs, where parents themselves can benefit from learning more about the learning process, but also about learning things themselves, about how to use new technologies and how to engage with their children in their use of new technologies. Now, another area is looking at educational opportunities. Of course, unfortunately, not everyone has the same opportunity globally, within a nation, even within a school. And there are a range of um, individuals that are privileged in terms of their access to education and a range of individuals that are disadvantaged. And technology can be used to assist in addressing those disadvantages. So, for example, career planning and planning to go to university can be supported uh, particularly for those that are first in family that have never um, have close relatives who have gone through that particular learning pathway. So being able to utilize technology to support them in that can be a very effective um, use of technology. Then there's academic planning, um, just planning out that, those pathways, particularly if it's something very new to them. Um, preparing for tests, uh, is again something that is a skill that needs to be learnt and, and where those tests are significant barriers to opportunities. 
then having support for that test preparation is an important aspect of their learning pathway. And then there's elements of financial aid and being able to access support mechanisms to assist them with their learning. And just the whole aspect of online learning for individuals that haven't had a strong exposure to technology and having to engage with a whole new way of learning online can be a daunting process. And you may come up with some ideas around educational technology to support that. Then of course there's assessment. Assessment is always a big issue in education. But technology can be used to try to address some of the um, challenging aspects of assessment, but also to make it more effective. So automated grading is something we've talked about a fair bit in this course. Um, adaptive testing, where the test adjusts to the needs of the learner. Uh, Performance-based assessments, where we get away from testing knowledge and test actual performance on tasks and students being able to demonstrate that they can do things. Uh, analysis of all the data that can derive from the testing process and being able to analyze that data and provide feedback to the assessors, but also to students and parents and governments, whoever else may need that data to make decisions. And then the idea of student portfolios, where we take um, the collection of all of this data and we frame it in a way that students have got potentially control over so that it's a, a resume of their skills and capabilities, but also making that available to um, educators, uh, those that need to make decisions around whether or not students progress into higher education, receive financial aid, and a whole range of other measures that can go beyond the more traditional test-based measures for those um, opportunities. Then of course there's improving teachers um, through professional development and how we can utilize technology to have a better process to engage with the teaching profession um, with online learning and virtual learning communities where teachers can support one another and engage with learning that supports their profession. Um, use of learning management systems, not just for students, but also for teachers and how we can manage the learning process for teachers and that may open up opportunities that you could explore. Then there's analysis of the data that we can collect about teachers in order to improve their teaching, but also to improve their opportunities, their access to funding, to time release, to um, attendance of conferences. And all of this can be supported with data that recognizes where um, scarce resources need to be applied to improving the teaching workforce. And then there's the aspect of classroom observation being able to use technology to analyze what is occurring in a classroom to give feedback to teachers so that they can improve their practice. And there can be a whole range of approaches that can be done around that through sharing of videos, through having AI analysis of what's occurring, um, and even just the process of self-reflection. So uh, much of this is around improving educator productivity, how we can make teachers more efficient to make better use of their um, valuable time to have the maximum impact upon teacher, upon students and their learning. So classroom management tools have been around for a while, but there's certainly plenty of scope to improve those and to integrate other technologies. Um, digital assessment and feedback is something that we've been talking about again quite a bit. Uh, access to that professional development network, analysis of the data that's being collected, and just general communication and collaboration around all of the processes that teachers need to engage with. Now, making learning accessible to all students generally focuses on students that have a disadvantage, such as disabilities, but it can also be for a whole range of other students that may be considered mainstream, that have their own particular individual needs and can benefit from individualized processes. So again, there is assistive technologies, so technologies that may assist students with visual impairment or audio impairments, uh, physical difficulties, even with some cognitive difficulties. So there are lots of technologies that are available in the special needs area. A lot of this can then be focused around personalized learning for those particular needs, um, using the universal, learning for um, universal design for learning framework that emphasizes the need to address 
specific differences among students. The whole area of mobile learning, so that students don't have to have the difficulties um, in attending um, particular locations, particularly if they have physical challenges around movement. And then open education resources, so that students, regardless of their financial limitations, have got access to high quality resources. So all of this is around closing opportunity gaps. Now we know that not everyone receives an equal education. There are a range of different um, reasons for this. Some is around their own interest in education and just not putting enough effort into it. But there are also a lot of instances where students don't get equal opportunities around their educational journeys. So again, digital equity is a major issue that can be addressed through some aspects of education educational technology, um, particularly through personalised learning, but also around making learning more culturally responsive, where the learning experience is put off some students because it's framed around a particular culture, um, be that race or wealth or um, a whole range of different issues where some students feel disenfranchised because the learning hasn't been tailored for their particular um, cultural interests. A lot of this can be um, addressed through analysis of the data that's um, identifying particular um, areas of disadvantage and then more resources being applied to address those. Um, and also just collaborative learning where being able to work with um, their peers uh, that have similar interests and engage with that learning, it may be that they are the only student in the school from a particular cultural perspective but they may be able to team up with a number of other students from the similar cultures attending other schools and that may be enough to provide a supportive mechanism to support their learning so closing achievement gaps is the aim of having everyone achieve at the highest level that they can possibly do so now again personalized learning is the main focus of this but also um, ideas of formative assessment. So actually identifying where the difficulties are and then applying more effort into addressing those gaps, um, primarily through data analysis. But also the idea of blended learning, where we have opportunities to study online and also on campus, and even a mix of those, where we have students studying online and on campus at once, what we now call hybrid learning. And then the um, aspect of professional development of educators where not every teacher is necessarily trained sufficiently to address the achievement gaps that are evident in their classrooms and their students and providing that additional support to the teachers so that they can provide that support to their students. So these are a range of different areas of opportunity where you can explore educational technologies to address these. Now, some of them are being addressed by existing technologies. So you would then need to look at how you could um, do so in a different way, but there's new technologies emerging all of the time. Currently, we've got a huge wave of artificial intelligence applications that you could explore, but don't just limit it to artificial intelligence. There are a range of other educational technologies that we've been exploring during this course that you could consider as um, a candidate to addressing some of these needs and frame your um, investigation of a new educational technology, which doesn't necessarily mean it has to be completely new. It can be repurposing an existing technology that has to be done so in a new way. And we'll discuss your ideas in the tutorial.